right, what is up, boxing fans? Anthony with Bleacher Bums Gaming, and today uh, very excited and happy to uh, get this game up on the channel and take a look at it. We are going to take a look at Legends of Boxing for Windows, PC version of the board game Legends of Boxing by uh, Gary Brown at Stone Mountain Press. And um, I've known uh, Gary Brown for a little bit and consider him a friend and, and you know fellow game designer. And I have uh, previously gotten a couple of his games, uh, Grid Zone, which is an excellent uh, simulation of American style football and also Dice United, a very fun and quick playing uh, soccer game, which I have the Premier League teams for. Now, at the time I started uh, developing Glory Days Boxing, uh, back in uh, you know, late 2018, and it was released, of course, in May, actually June of 2019. Um, I did not know about this game until shortly after uh, I released Glory Days Boxing, and um, checked out some videos of it then, and like I said, I've, I've grown to have a great deal of respect for Gary Brown. He puts out some amazing products and a very, very creative game designer. Uh, his games, the engines are, uh, you know, especially for some of the, uh, like Grid Zone as an example, very creative engines, very uh, creative way to get to the end result. Legends of Boxing is more uh, a more typical, I guess, cards and dice or sports simulation game um, where it follows the actual flow of a fight. Now, I purposely put off um, getting the cards and dice version for a couple of reasons. One, uh, and again, I don't consider, you know, Gary and I as competitors. We are, um, you know, basically peers and just two people that happen to design games. And, you know, there's no rivalry or anything like that. It's, it's I think, um, a lot of respect for him, like I mentioned. So I, I didn't, however, want to be influenced. The um, only boxing game I'd owned before I started uh, uh, designing Glory Days Boxing was... Uh, the original title bout, which I got um, initially back in 1979, and uh, have not gotten the uh, title bout two version, and just like I didn't get the um, Legends of Boxing cards and dice, for the simple reason that I did not want any other game to influence what I was doing in terms of uh, design mechanics and especially rating fighters. I wanted to, you know, stick with a vision and design that I had and you know, basically see how that held up. So it uh, had nothing to do with it being another boxing game. I just did not want to be swayed by any other game out there. And, you know, now that we've gotten uh, 1,100, and I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, no, 1,000 and soon to be 1,100 boxers out for Glory Days Boxing. Um, you know, I, I thought it was time to take a look at uh, Legends of Boxing. It had always intrigued me and I've enjoyed Gary's other games. And about the time I was thinking that, the PC version came out, so I downloaded the demo, uh, played around with it, and finally purchased the uh, full version. So that's what we're going to look at today. And um, first of all, this, this flows very well on computer. It's a very good, uh, very good import or port, I should say, of the Cards and Dice version. Um, very minimal work for the user to do, and you can tailor that. You can click roll your own dice if you want. You can let each round play out automatically. A lot of great options, and you see in this screen here, uh, there is a career version where you create your own boxer and you fight against um, other fictional boxers on your way up the ranks, uh, local, regional, etc., all the way up to the world stage. And you can also include real boxers in that um in your own little career too. Uh, there's a universe option where you will import fighters at a given weight class or as many weight classes as you want, uh, actual real life fighters, and basically set up the universe to uh, play out however you uh, prefer, um, exhibition mode. And and we'll get into the universe now because that's, that's really the um, mode that interests me the most and what I enjoy playing. So I already have one set up here, RCB, which stands for Random Chaos Boxing. And uh, what that entails is basically it's, I've got the 165 heavyweights and uh, I just import heavyweights from different eras into a game world. 
And we'll take a look at, uh, and I'll show you what I mean. So one of the cool things I like about the universe feature is you can choose how to populate it, who to populate it with, and you can add as you go along. Now there's options in here, and we'll go to edit fighters. So the first thing is you get the opportunity to have uh, whatever fighters you want in the universe at any given time. And again, I'm doing random debut, but if you wanted to do kind of a historical um, universe where you import fighters as they debuted in real life or close to, you know, over, say, a period of 10, 15 years or whatever, uh, you could do that. So you'd start out that in that case with um, fighters from the early 20th century like uh, Jack Johnson, uh, James Jeffries, um, Jess Willard, uh, Jack Dempsey, which is not in this universe, you know, and so on and so on. Fred Fulton, which was one of the white hopes in the era when Johnson was champion. So you could go that route or you could go the route I've done where I've just kind of imported random boxers throughout history, which enables me to make some what if matches. And you can see here in the list of heavyweights, uh, these are the fighters I have set to active and you by clicking on this you can make a fighter active or inactive and You see down here with Rocky Marciano. I have him Inactive he's not ready to de uh, debut yet. So you do that and that's how you import uh, Fighters in which will show up in your rankings and these will be the fighters that you're able to play at the time you uh, run the universe and as you go along, you can add fighters and, and build it up to whatever you want. So see, I've got a lot of, again, good fighters over different eras, Bone Crusher Smith, uh, some recent guys like uh, Herbie High, Carl the Truth Williams from the 80s, um, some older guys, 60s and 70s like Chuck Wepner, uh, Victorio Campolo, uh, Tom Heaney, who goes back to the 20s and 30s, et cetera, et cetera. So I decided to populate my universe initially with 80 fighters. I held a ranking tournament to crown the first champion. And that turned out to be Larry Holmes, who beat uh, Joe Lewis in the final by unanimous decision in a very entertaining fight. And you can also set up other titles as well. Uh, there's regional titles which come with the game. And actually, there's a European Commonwealth. The only title that I have added is the... Uh, North American Boxing Federation title, which would encompass fighters in uh, the US, Canada, and Mexico. And the other thing you can do when you set this, you can do as carded, which means the fighters will uh, appear and fight based on the actual cards and dice versions of their boxer, uh, no changes. And you can set them up in a career mode where they progress through various stages, and that's what I have uh, chosen to do. So we've got our active fighters. I've started them all, novice is the uh, very first level. I've started them all as seasoned, which is progressing. And then as they get better, they become adept, then prime, and then the attrition mode sets in where they start to tail off. And at which point, uh, as I get to that stage with fighters, I will decide when uh, to retire them and then import new fighters into the universes. So that's how that works. Um, you can see here the titles. Uh, there's rankings. And again, this is based on the uh, uh, titles you set up. So world rankings, European rankings, which uh, only, of course, captures fighters from Europe. The Commonwealth rankings, which is the greater United Kingdom, including Canada. And then I've also, as I said, created uh, the North American title, which is Canada and the U.S. and Mexico. And thus far, uh, the only active Canadian fighter I have is George Tavallo. And as you hover over them, which you'll be seeing here, their cards will come up and you get a look at how they are at this stage of the game. You can also edit, uh, again, create more titles, edit current ones. And by doing that, you can choose who to... Uh, include in terms of what countries are eligible to hold that title and show you a quick look at that. So for the world title, you see every um, country here is highlighted. And if I went to the Commonwealth title, 
which I will have to now bring back up. You see, again, the greater United Kingdom and uh, African countries there are included in that. Uh, European. And again, uh, countries in Europe. And finally, the uh, North American, which I, as indicated earlier, includes fighters from Canada, the U.S., and Mexico. And actually, I could probably... Uh, we can include Cuba in that, and uh, Dominican Republic too, why not? And I think we are good to go, you know, and you know what, um, well, that's in a different region, we won't do that. So that enables you to include, you know, who you want to be able to fight for each title. So. Really good, uh, really good features there. So it allows you to customize it to uh, fit your play taste. Uh, the world title fights, this will keep a history of them and then the current heavyweight holders. Uh, thus far, we only have a world champion, Crown and Jack Dempsey, who won the uh, North American title last night with a 12 round decision over Ken Norton. And finally, we will look, and the other options here, if you get, and when you get other weight classes, which I will, uh, you can add them into the game. And then there's some cool options. Uh, you know, you can tailor this however you want. This is exactly how I've set my universe up. I've got the three knockdown rule, uh, 15 round world title fights. You can set the default fight length. And this, was, this is what will come up every time you start a, or have a particular fight in your universe or exhibition. Uh, adjust volume settings, font size, which is good for us uh, seasoned gamers. And your TKO rules, current era, 20th century, which I went with in early 20th century when fighters were allowed to take obscene amounts of punishment. Uh, knockdown severity chart and different mode adjustments. And the mode adjustments, and I, I hope I'm right here, uh, comes into play with the um, different stages of career I showed you in the edit fighters option where uh, they start out as either novice and then you know work their way up to prime and then to the attrition phase phase I'm sorry and then you can also uh, pick how quick you want the animations to go and this would be raiders uh, rating changes during the fight uh, you can have no dice animation slow dice normal fast etc auto roll, hide, and of course, playing a cards and dice port. Uh, part of the joy that a lot of us get in playing cards and dice games is rolling the dice. So of course you would want to see those in the computer version as well. And then uh, options to show or not show the knockdown count, uh, pause or no pause after the dice roll and how fast an auto round goes through. And I'll show you that as we get into it. So a lot of good options here. And again, you can tailor it exactly how you like, which I think is, is you know, key to any good uh, sports dice or cards and dice game, sports simulation game. And it, it really plays true to the uh, cards and dice version from what I've seen in videos. And from reading the rules, the PDF rules are also um, given to you when you order the computer version. So you get an understanding of how the game engine and the game mechanics work. Uh, both in front of you and behind the scenes. You know, and finally, again, we went through the rankings and we'll show you the current uh, world rankings. Our top 10, a very stout top 10, even though I did not include a lot of good fighters in this initial setup, but Jack Johnson, Joe Lewis, Liston, Jeffries, Dempsey, Walcott, Chavalo, Patterson, and Norton are the top 10. And, uh, some good guys working outside, Jess Willard, who lost to James Jeffries in his last fight, dropped down uh, quite a bit. Eric Ash, that rating probably will not last too long, all the way down to, uh, again, number 79. So it's a basic look at uh, the way the ratings and editing capabilities work. So we'll look at the schedule. This is absolutely one of my favorite features of the game outside of the fight engine itself. So this schedule, it keeps a history of every card that you have, which is super cool because it, this is one of the things I like to look at when I run a universe. And even when I play um, cards and dice games, 
myself, baseball games, uh, you know, glory days, boxing, whatever, I always keep an Excel sheet with results and records and all that stuff. I love that part of it, the statistics. So this is really cool. It allows you to go in and you can click on any card to see who fought on that card. And you see in this fight that uh, we had uh, Hans Berkey beating Willie Besman, uh, Besmanoff. Uh, by TKO. Jeffries over Ash, a bit of a fun mismatch there. I did that just to punish Butterbean. Uh, Buddy Bear, Frankie Lynch. So it shows you the entire card. And then, of course, the main event. And you can click on the um, fight itself and it shows you a report of the fight, uh, all how all the scoring went. And here you can see this was a very lopsided fight for a Jack Johnson. Uh, tracks the action through every round. Uh, how ratings fluctuate throughout the fight. Really, really well put together here. And it allows you, you know, at a click to see everything that's going on in the universe. And again, love this feature 100%. Um, so then we'll get to the meat and potatoes of the fight or the game. I'm, I'm sorry, the actual fights. And then you can set up a new fight night. So here uh, we're going to... Uh, let's see who has not fought recently that's a top fighter. We're going to get uh, Joe Lewis back in the ring. He has not fought since his initial uh, loss to Larry Holmes in the tournament. So we'll set up a new fight night. And here you'll go down, pick who you want to include. And it, it sorts the fighters by rank, which I, I also like. I think that's a good feature because you can determine if you want an even match based on rankings or if, say, you want a little tune-up fight or maybe what will uh, turn out to be a mismatch. So what we're going to do is we're going to give Joe Lewis a, a tough battle against George Travallo in our main event. Click Add Fight. It goes there. Uh, then we'll go down and set the undercard up. Let's get, uh, let's take a look at Max Bear, Slapsy Maxi. And we'll give him, uh, this actually is a very intriguing matchup, the Wild Bull of the Pompous, Luis Furpo, who of course uh, captured in that famous fight against Jack Dempsey, sending Dempsey through the ropes before Dempsey uh, climbed back into the ring to stop him. You know, then we'll move down in the rankings here and... Uh, Let's get uh, Dwayne Bobbick on the card, and we'll try and give him a uh, easy match. Uh, we'll put him against Boone Kirkman. That should be an easy fight for Bobbick. And we'll fill out the card. Uh, ooh, at two tall Jones, maybe. Actually, let's go Big John Tate, and we'll have Big John Tate, again, fight a lower-ranked fighter. And we'll match him up with Bob McClure. So there you have it. And again, you can add as many fights or as few fights as you want. Uh, options here to click on if the uh, fight will be for a title in any of the regions. And we're not going to have any, uh, any of that going on, so we'll just go ahead and save the card. And... You'll see it, uh, it now shows up here. And these cards are all, also set up. And actually, I've got Lewis, never mind. I've got to change that. I've got Lewis scheduled in another card. So maybe instead of doing this, and you know, again, that just shows you how easy it is to set a card up. We'll go ahead and play one of these scheduled cards I have. And we'll start with, uh, why not? We'll go with this one. So here you see I've got uh, on the undercard Joe Walcott against Buddy Bear, uh, Teofilo Stevenson against David Bay, and of course Mark Gastineau, a football player turned failed boxer against Brian Omelia. So you can fight this in uh, fight these fights in a couple of different ways. You can do an auto fight. You can go in and fight where you uh, go through the dice rolls yourself or have the rounds go by automatically. So we'll start out. We'll do, uh, no one wants to see Mark Gastineau in the ring. So we'll do an auto fight here. 
And there you go, Brian Omelia defeated Gastineau by TKO at the end of round four. And if you want, you can still bring this up. And again, this is another very cool feature. It still tracks all the stats, all the adjustments, all the action. Uh, you can see when uh, D'Amelio had chances to finish Gastineau and when the fight was finally stopped, which uh, looks like would be to Gastineau exceeding his uh, TKO points for the fight. Um, we'll go in and we'll also auto fight uh, Teofilo Stevenson against Bay. I'm predicting a Stevenson knockout here. And sure enough, TKO at 202 of round three. And finally, we will do the uh, Buddy Bear Joe Walcott auto fight as well. Should be a win for Walcott and unanimous decision. All right, now we're going to get into our main event. So screen, very, very well done. And again, this if you've seen the board game or own the board game, which I assume a, a high percentage of players of the PC game do have the board game, you see it brings up the uh, charts used in the board game. It does a great job. I really like the feel of the cards. It's kind of got that uh, old weathered newsprint look on here. Uh, you know, which again adds flavor to the game. It's a historical boxing game, and this to me really does. It is a nice touch versus just say a plain white background with numbers on it. This this kind of has a nostalgic feel with that uh, somewhat weathered newsprint look. So thumbs up for that. And then of course, um, with any game programmed by the Rue Games team, and again this was Richard Hanna who also. Uh, I believe programmed re PC Replay Baseball, which is another uh, PC uh, port of a cards and dice game I absolutely love. And in fact, I think it's the best baseball uh, PC port from a cards and dice game that exists. Um, so high marks for that. And you see here, it's, it's that typical quality you would come to expect from that particular crew. Um, tracking here for cuts and eye issue swelling cuts of the eye, etc., and others as well. And then the cards. It has the basic ratings, the uh, control ratings, which um, give you this CTN, which is the fighter's control rating. And the uh, control rating here, the lower the better. And we'll explain how that comes into play as we go. And then these columns here track uh, fouls, TKO points, knockdowns, a subtracting endurance and of course points for punches scored during the round. Uh, the cards again an exact replica of the game. Fighters can fight in four different styles and uh, the tagline for this is styles make fights and this does a very good job of simulating that. Uh, fighters can be elusive, be outside fighters and inside fighters or pressure fighters. And you can see these guys are both sluggers, neither is elusive and uh, both fight outside the same. You're gonna get a little bit more pressure from Joe Lewis and a little bit more inside from Sonny Liston. And the other ratings here, of course, Chin will cut. Uh, that's how many TKO points they can accumulate. And TKOs can occur based on points occurred in an individual round or cumulative throughout the fight. If the fighter has lost the two preceding rounds and is also losing the current round. And ho hopefully I don't quote any of the rules. Um, you know, the game is very intuitive and easy to figure out. I went and scammed over some of the rules that come with the game just so I had an idea of why certain things were happening and what the numbers and, and meant and how it all flowed together. So I'm by no means uh, completely well versed. I will be, but I just wanted to get an idea when I started playing. You know, and even without that, it's pretty easy once you get going to figure out what's going on. So we have durability, which factors into a uh, will, power, uh, defensive ratings, and defensive ratings are adjusted by where the fighter is fighting. In this case, Lewis is going to be a pressure fighter for the first round. And uh, one, one thing I'd maybe like to see is the pressure roll is done behind the scenes and then you get where the fighter is going to spend that round. Would uh, you know be okay to see that, but again, not a big deal at all, and, and probably due to programming limitations. And you know, you definitely see what's going on by looking at the cards. So uh, that's basically an overview of the cards, and of course, the charts, um, the K results here, 
are matched up against a fighter's power for a knockdown chance. Everything else is um, the jab, hook, cross, different uh, punch, uh, punch variations and how many points the fighter gets credited for those. And there will also be results that come up for cuts. And um, if a defensive pass is checked, which we'll show you as we start rolling, uh, these charts will change as when a uh, fighter successfully defends a punch, they can still be scored upon, but they cannot suffer a knockdown, and it uh, reduces the amount of damage they take as well. So I think uh, we're going to get going. So first, uh, we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you the auto round feature and uh, also the auto fight feature. But first, we are going to go through and do manually. Now, again, you can access your uh, option screen from here if you want to change something for this particular fight. Uh, again, the report comes up and you can look at that at any time during the fight to see how things are going or recap the action. And another really nice little uh, feature, you know, and again, little thing, but things that mean a lot. This, this captures the uh, ringside scorecard by your ringside expert and doesn't always match what the judges are doing. Of course, you do not see those as the fight goes along, but uh, gives you an idea. And, you know, just like if you're watching a fight on TV, it's fun to follow what the uh, ringside expert thinks. So we're going to go ahead and start the uh, fight. So seconds out, round one. And to roll, you just click one of the squares. So you see here, 9 and 13, Sonny Liston did not uh, exceed his control rating. Joe Lewis did by 5. So he's going to be in control, and you're tagged there. Uh, 5 tells you how many uh, points he exceeded it by. Now, if both exceed their uh, control number by the same amount, so say Liston had rolled a 15, it would be a 5, or they both roll below their control number. You go to the split action chart and you could compare that um, somewhat loosely to the toe-to-toe -to -toe, uh, mode in Glory Days Boxing where they can exchange punches at the same time. There can be fouls. Uh, there can be a clinch, that type of thing. So that, that will come up, so we'll show you. So now we have uh, control established for Lewis, meaning he'll be on the offense. Liston has a defense of one, and this is a 1d6, and it shows you there what the uh, number you'll be rolling. So you'll roll that, and if he gets above, then Lewis will get an undefended punch, which will come off of this chart, and you roll for that. And this is a 100 square, so 2d10, and one, and that shows you here, it matches up against the pressure chart. One to five is a two-point hook, and Again, the red symbol here, we have a possible cut. Liston's cut rating is a 7. 1D20, 7 or below, he's going to be cut. And he is not. So we go on to the next segment. And then it tracks a punch type hook, two points here, and records it down there. So next segment. And Lewis looking to assert himself here in this one. Again, Exceeds his control number by eight. Taking control. Liston tries to defend. He cannot. Lewis lets the hands go. Big combination now. So referencing that to the chart, you see K4, and that is inside of Lewis's power number. Big combination, and we're going to have a possible knockdown, which is rated against uh, Liston's chin here, which is a 10. So you'll, you'll make the roll, and you can have a knockdown, in this case, on a roll of one. Excuse me. And again, this is a 2D10 roll. 4.3 point, 2 point. And the punch result uh, leads to, again, either a knockdown or differing levels of the fighter being hurt or stunned or just shaking it off. So we'll roll for the uh, knockdown check. Solid shot, but Liston shrugged it off. You see that's between 39 and 100. So he takes a big shot from Lewis and keeps coming. So on to the next segment. There are nine segments per round. Finally, uh, Liston exceeding his control number by one, and Lewis is below his. Takes control. Lewis is a better defensive fighter and not going to defend that punch, though. Lewis, uh, Lewis absorbs a straight right hand from Liston, and we go on to the next segment. 
Fighter circling the ring, and again, Liston takes control. Lewis tries to defend. He does. So now you see the chart from the outside change. So now there's no more knockdown opportunities. Uh, there is a cut opportunity, um, opportunities for Lewis to block or duck a punch, slip a punch and counter, uh, counter a missed shot, or take a punch and still get the counter off. So let's see what comes out of that. And, you know, very a very good very good feel of what goes on in the fight. It puts the defense of a fighter front and center. So you can see as the fight goes, you know, a good defensive fighter is going to get a lot more of these charts up there. And uh, again, does a very good job of visualizing and capturing that. And bonus of a PC game, you don't have to shuffle charts around. It just pops up and it's right there and ready to go. So the roll there was a 70 and that is going to be just a single straight punch. So Lewis takes that and Liston trying to climb back into the fight. Let's see if Lewis can stop his advance. All right, now both fighters exceeded their control number by seven. So we go to the split action chart. You see the results there. There could be a clash of heads, which could result in an unintentional cut. Um, accidental headbutt. Foul checks for red and blue. Clinch, referee separates them. Both fighters basically just moving around within the ring. Uh, Mystics change, both fighters doing uh, a good job at avoiding the other one's blows during the toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. And then, of course, an even exchange and an even flurry, which is uh, two points each. Let's see what we get here. And 64, and that's going to be a Mystics change. Both fighters throw haymakers, and we move on to the next segment. So passing the halfway point in the round and listening. Only exceeds his by eight. Very close round. And again, you see here, listening with the better 1D20 roll. But lower is better for the control factor. So Lewis able to exceed his by nine despite having the uh, lower 1D20 roll. And that really uh, does a good job of capturing uh, fighters' um, control in the ring, ring generalship, if you will, uh, and, and how they dictate the pace of the fight and dictate the action. So Liston trying to defend, and he's had a horrible time, not a very good defensive fighter. Takes a uppercut, 86. See, two-point uppercut, and that is finally going to get him a TKO point, which again comes into play, especially if he exceeds five, he's going to be at uh, danger of getting stopped. All right, Liston, though, roars back from that, and Lewis, once again, Exhibiting superb defense and reduces that to a one-point hook. And we have 60, actually 50 seconds to go in the round. Another thing I like, and again, it, it's subtle stuff, little subtle things that make games for me. Um, this just doesn't go, you know, in 20-second increments. It's It mixes it up, so there's a variance, 10 seconds here, and then down to 223, 207 which again, a little thing, but it's a little nuance that I just find cool. So Lewis in control and Liston tries to defend, but takes a double hook for his trouble. And we move into the final segment of the round. Lewis maintaining control, a good first round for the Brown Bomber. And he's going to finish with a big straight right hand down the pipe and another possible cut. Liston is going to be... Cut, a minor cut under the left eye. So uh, some damage for Liston. And you see his cut situation populates with a square as well as the left eye. And of course, as this adds up, it can also lead to a stoppage. So we head to the next round. And based on where they fight, um, they will lose that many endurance points. Uh, Liston lost three and Lewis four. So still a good uh, endurance advantage for Lewis. Now, this next round, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and let that play out automatically. We'll show you how that works. So, again, <clears throat> excuse me, multiple options on how involved you want to be in the fight as it uh, progresses. So, here we go auto round. And 
Liston comes out in control, lets the hands go. Defensive fail check for Lewis. Body head combo, two points. Liston maintaining control, walking down the brown bomber. Lewis able to defend and a hook for two points for Liston. Liston off to a great start here in the third. And once again in control, Lewis defends a body head combo, one point. Liston trying to walk the Brown Bomber down, and finally Lewis regains control, lets the hands go, and a combination to the head, two points land. Dancing around now, Liston, though, plotting four, takes control again. Lewis gloves up, blocks a jab, and ducks out of the way, back to the center of the ring, and neither fighter in control. It's going to be a split action chart. Both fighters move, jockey for position, and Lewis takes control. Liston defends. Lewis lets the hands go. A straight punch. Liston ducks under that. And Lewis maintaining control here in the final 20 seconds of the round. A double jab. Two points as we move into the final segment. Lewis coming back and finishes the round in control. Once again, lets the hands go. And that's going to be a big hook to the jaw. Two points. And that brings the round to an end as Liston takes another TKO point. So that's how the round goes. Um, when you set it on auto and again options you can go in at any point and move the auto round speed to instant fast to normal which i have it on or slow which enables you to take it in a little bit more and if maybe you're doing a fight a video on a fight and you want to uh savor the action like our good buddy al red Sox fan does uh, cheap plug check out that great channel one of the best uh cards and dice and sports gaming announcers on the net so he probably might set that at slow. I know he likes to roll his own dice, but if he did go auto, he'd set that at slow so he could uh, provide a little bit more color in the background. So we'll just uh, move ahead now and go to the next round. And what we're going to do here, we'll do another auto round and we'll uh, do auto fight. So there's the endurance uh, reduction. Four to two, and we are ready to go. Actually, we'll do auto fight now, and we'll just take you through and, and call this as it's happening. I think I've given a, you know, a fairly good overview and description of the game. And of course, if uh, you have the cards and dice game, you're going to know all this stuff anyway. And in fact, probably a lot better than me. So here we go, auto fight round number three, and Lewis starts the uh, round in control. Liston. Again, failing to defend, takes a straight jab to the mouth. Lewis dancing around, in control again, lets the hands go. Lewis from the outside, a nice right hand for a point gets through. Liston storms back, traps Lewis in the corner. And Lewis, though, gloves up, covering up, and ducks under a hook. That was a powerful shot by Liston. Liston, though, maintains control, walking Lewis down and lets the hands go. Liston, a jab, snaps Lewis's head back, sweat, showers the press row. But Lewis, not one to take that, fights back, but Liston with some good defense blocks the jab from the Brown Bomber, and we sit in the middle of the ring, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Both fighters, though, block and miss, and Lewis, though, takes control. Circling moves in, and there's a strong hook to the jaw. Liston steps back, Lewis follows, and Lewis... Nice right cross down the pipe, two points, backs Liston into the corner, Lewis... Looking to move in and do some damage. And that's a jab as Liston bobs and weaves. But another TKO point for Sonny as round three is finished. And we're ready to go round four. No wasting as they're uh, up off their stools. Lewis in control. And there's a jab. The Brown Bomber fighting carefully from distance. No facial damage to Liston there. Uh, Liston, though, comes back. Lewis defending smartly and dodges a big uppercut from Liston. And the big uh, bear, Sonny Liston, facing an uphill battle here as he eats a right hand from Joe Lewis. Lewis dancing around. Liston, though, pins him again in the corner. And Lewis trying to defend. Eats a jab, moves out of the corner, back to ring center. And back to control for Lewis as Lewis stalking Liston. A jab again, snaps Sonny's head back. Both fighters circling and Liston in control. But Lewis... Showing some good defense. Bobs and weaves. Ducks under the cross. Back to ring center. Liston again, though. Relentless. And finally traps Lewis against the ropes. A jab. Two points get through. Lewis has had enough of that. Moves back to ring center. Takes control. And the Brown Bomber, a straight right hand down the pipe. Liston, though, answers back. And Lewis, does he get his gloves up in time? No. He eats a jab for a point as the round is finished. 
and listen down to four endurance. Lewis, 15, as round five is underway. And possible foul, incidental contact, no foul. And again, both fighters center of the ring fall into a clinch. Could fatigue be setting in already? Liston, no, lets the hands go. And that's going to be a big shot. Combination for a point gets through. As Lewis shakes his head, he's not hurt. Go to the split action chart. Both fighters miss and back to ring center. Action slowing down a little bit here as Lewis looks to reassert himself and gets a hook in for a point. And the Brown Bomber now walking down Liston. Has him back in the corner now. Let's the hands go. Jabs trying to find his range and set up that big right hand. But the fighters toe to toe. Both miss with big overhand right hands. And back to ring center. They're going to match up again. Both fighters get in a shot. Even exchange in the middle of the ring. Lewis, though, reasserts himself. Takes, or I'm sorry, Liston takes control. Gets in with a hook. And possible knockdown. Lewis is stunned. And end of the round, and we're going to go back. Let's uh, let's first check our ringside scorecard. So our ringside expert has us very close at this point. Couple of even rounds, two to Lewis, and the last one for Liston. And wanted to talk to about that last stage. Now, if a fighter, depending on how hurt he is, or if he goes down a fighter will have a basically chance to finish him, which is uh, you can uh, correlate that to an unopposed action in, say, Glory Days Boxing. And we're back in round number six with action. Both fighters exchange and Liston now mounting a comeback, but Lewis showing some keen defense. Still takes an uppercut for a point, but no damage done as he was able to roll with that punch. Lewis now takes control and Lewis Aggressive combination. Snaps Liston's head back for two points. Lewis now retaining control, letting the hands go, trying to finish Liston here. A big combination. And Sonny, is he going to go down? He was hurt. Liston is hurt. Another TKO point. And Lewis gets in a free action here. Gets through with an uppercut for a point. And referee taking a close look at Liston. But Sonny fights back. Lewis, though, defends smartly and blocks a hard jab from Liston. Both fighters ring center now, and again, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, even flurry. Big punches land as they get in several shots each. Lewis, though, asserts himself again, and an uppercut for a point lands on Liston. Liston now comes back and looks to corner Lewis, but once again, Lewis showing some expert defense, and that's the round. Liston now negative five endurance. His power goes down, his will goes down, and Lewis still fresh. But Liston is fighting as he comes out hard in round seven. And that's going to be a jab. Lewis easily dodges that. Dances around his big lumbering foe. Let's the hands go. And Lewis now a hook for two points. Backs Liston into the ropes. And that's going to be a possible cut. And now swelling around the left eye of Sonny Liston. As a result of the punishment he is taking from the Brown Bomber. Lewis again relentless. Throws an uppercut to the body for a point. Liston, though, showing he is game, comes back and lets the hands go for a big right hand. A looping overhand right gets Lewis's attention. Liston looking to follow up. Lewis has the gloves up. And again, side slips and counters. Lewis letting the hands go. Double jab. A smart counter as Lewis works out of harm's way and reasserts himself in the middle of the ring. Lewis winding up a big uppercut, backs Liston in the corner, another TKO point, and he is at five now. That's his max as they go toe-to-toe, -to -toe and a possible foul, marginal foul for Lewis. No warning there. There actually will be a warning. And backing uh, Liston up again. Lewis looking to finish this here in the seventh round, and that's it. Liston's corner throws a towel in and took too much punishment. You can see his TKO maxed. And a cumulative damage in the round, and his corner has seen enough. Joe Lewis is going to get the TKO victory over the Bear, Sonny Liston, at 239 of round seven. And at this point, we can bring up a report to see what the scoring is. Liston uh, looked to make a rally in the last couple of rounds, but Lewis really stepped on the gas here in round number seven. Just too much for Liston to overcome. And you could see on the official scoring coming into this round, it was a close fight. 
Uh, two judges had Lewis up by a single point, and the third had it dead even at 57 apiece. So you can track here how the defense goes throughout the fight, and that's based on, of course, where they are fighting, um, how the power went down for Liston as he reached fatigue points, how defense, again, uh, based on where Lewis is fighting, goes up and down. So a lot of really good information here. It gives you the cut points, foul points, TKO points. And, of course, you have the option to print it out, which is cool if you want to do that. And then finally here, it tracks a total number of points throughout the fight. Uh, 48 to 25 for Joe Lewis. And... After that, you exit the fight, and then it shows you the results of the card. And when you go back to the schedule, that's going to be the uh, latest card that's completed here. And uh, one more left, which will be for our European title. And you can go in and check the rankings and see how those were affected uh, by the latest fight. And there's a formula. That's also explained on the... Um, uh, PDF that comes with the game that you just click on a link in the uh, title screen and it brings up uh, multiple PDFs on different stages like doing a career, setting up a universe, and how the fight plays out and what everything means within the fight. But in the universe PDF, it does tell you based on the ranking differential how much a fighter will go up or down in the rankings um, depending on whether it's the uh, favored fighter or higher ranked fighter or lower ranked fighter that wins, etc. So here we see Joe Lewis has moved back up into the number one contender spot. And again, his only loss was to uh, Larry Holmes in the final of the world title tournament. So that sets up a rematch for the title between Lewis and Holmes. Of course, prior to that, uh, Holmes is going to have another defense. And early rumors are he is electing to make that defense against the Galveston giant, Jack Johnson. Uh, Jack Johnson is currently the number two ranked heavyweight in the world, five and one with three KOs and coming off a TKO of Fred Fulton. And as you bring up, um, click on Johnson's name again, you can see his card and how it is currently in the universe, his record picture of him which again, there's pictures on the website, just like there is for uh, Replay Baseball that you can download and easily install into your uh, pictures folder. But here it shows um, Johnson's record. Started out uh, defeating Billy Daniels, then beat uh, Ozzy Jaws Ocasio. Uh, a very good fight against uh, the Cuban sensation at Teofilo Stevenson, won by a majority decision. And finally, his old nemesis, James Jeffries, who he beat in a real-life fight, uh, July 4th, 1910, in Reno, Nevada, in a fight where uh, Jeffries came out of retirement, prompted by uh, basically white America to come and be the white hope that dethroned uh, Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion of the world. And, of course, that ended with a mauling by Johnson and a 14th-round stoppage of Jeffries. Here, a lopsided decision, and finally losing a uh, fairly decisive decision to Larry Holmes before uh, rebounding with the win against Fulton. So interesting that Holmes uh, elects to give Johnson the first title shot, perhaps feeling he matches up better against him. Uh, let's just take a look at uh, Larry Johnson's, or Larry Johnson, Larry Holmes' road to the title, and this was all in the tournament. And here you can see he started out beating uh, Giuseppe Ross, an easy uh, unanimous decision, almost a shutout, uh, then stopped Emerald Davidson. So definitely not getting very much competition early on, but a tough fight against uh, the rugged Canadian George Chavalo, which he won again, a very uh, fairly lopsided decision and a shocker taking out Jack Dempsey by TKO in the 11th round. Uh, the Johnson decision, and finally the decision against Joe Lewis. So you see um, Holmes, he's been uh, fairly convincing in his wins, and he is definitely the cream of the crop right now in this universe. So we'll see if uh, either Lewis, when he gets another shot, or Johnson can dethrone him. Really, he's fought the top guys in Dempsey, Johnson, and Lewis. 
So other fighters in the top 10, uh, Jeffries coming off a stoppage of Butterbean. Mm, not very impressive there. Uh, Liston and Chavalo, both losses in their last fights. And then the rest of the top 10, uh, Patterson and Norton have yet to fight again. And both, well, Norton actually fought uh, after the tournament against Dempsey for the NABF title, which he lost. Uh, Patterson has not fought since uh, getting knocked out by Joe Lewis in the tournament. So not a lot of options right there, as you see everyone who is in the tournament. But uh, Holmes, of course, has an L by their name. So we'll see if it uh, is Johnson, Lewis, or perhaps one of these other fighters. Uh, definitely won't be Bob Satterfield. Uh, Max Bear was stopped by Sonny Liston in the fifth. Probably doesn't earn him a title shot. So we'll see how this plays out. And like I said, uh, we'll let the fighters go through and let the game organically develop them. And... Um, age and then we'll bring new fighters into the universe based on random selection so that's it a look at and a fight playthrough of legends of boxing for windows again a very very solid pc port of the excellent uh, cards and dice legends of boxing game by our good friend gary brown so rating of this definitely a thumbs up left right knock out of a game i'm really enjoying this and Honestly, it really makes me want to get uh, my game on PC as well because a lot of fun to play, so much easier to set up. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be getting a lot of mileage out of this. And we'll do some more fights on the channel. So shout out to Gary Brown and to uh, Richard Hanna, who is the programmer here with Rue Games. You guys have put out a gem. I absolutely 100% recommend this. And... Um, we will, uh, again, do some more fights on this uh, with this game on the channel. So check out Legends of Boxing for Windows. Uh, you can get um, a varying degree. The heavyweights have the most fighters right now, the 165 total. I believe the middleweights and welterweights have 95, and then some of the other divisions less. But uh, Gary's already indicated that uh, he's working on rating more fighters. Um, any nitpicks with the game? Really not a lot. A couple of things, and I, I've checked, and there's really no plans for that at this point in time. Uh, one thing I would personally like to see for universes is the ability to create your own fighters or, say, have the PC uh, create a group of random, say, terrible fighters that you can use to build up records on. And, you know, again, you have to be able to do things within the programming parameters. But that would be uh, probably the only big request I would have for this game at this point in time is to put some uh, fictional guys in your real life universe so that you don't have to have the top fighters fight against each other. You know, and you can see from the rankings, there are still plenty of uh, journeymen, uh, mid-level gatekeepers, and even, uh, I guess, opponent types in the game to build your records against. But, you know, again... Doesn't hurt to ask, but uh, that does not diminish my enjoyment of this excellent game one bit. So that is it. Uh, Anthony with Bleacher Bums Gaming. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you like this, uh, please give this video a thumbs up and hit the notification button. Uh, we also have another Let's Play that we'll be doing as soon as it gets here. And that is the new uh, creation from Greg Sovan, the creator of uh, fall Classic Baseball, his new game, Field Day Baseball. Very, very interesting system where it uh, all results come off the batter's card and are modified by certain ratings of the pitcher. So um, a lot of the uh, at-bats are resolved in a simple dice roll. You just have to reference a pitcher's card. It looks very fun. I've played around with the PDFs. Uh, which you get uh, when you order the printed game. But uh, waiting for the printed set 1978 to get completely into it. We'll definitely do a uh, review and let's play that. So hope you all have a good night. Uh, thanks again for supporting the channel and Glory Days Boxing. And next set, uh, again, cheap, shameless plug for me. Next um, up for Glory Days Boxing is Supplement Set 2, which features 60 fighters uh, not currently in the game that are being added. Uh, also going to include 20 super middleweights, uh, including uh, the 
fighters that participated in the Super Six, which will be fun to recreate. And then 20 either re-rates, and there's only two re-rated fighters. I re-rated Canelo uh, based on his recent performances and Josh Warrington also based on his. Uh, Canelo up, Warrington down. And then I've also uh, added some fighters at different weight classes, such as uh, Pacquiao at welterweight, uh, put the four kings, um, Duran, Leonard, Hearns, and Hagler. Of course, Hagler already had a middleweight card. That's what he fought, but gave the other three middleweight cards, so you can replay that as well. So that's coming up for Glory Days Boxing, and uh, we will see you next time. Hope you all had a great night, and keep rolling. Take care.